This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for joining our online worship for the Duke Center and Rue United Methodist Churches. My name is Pastor Beth Rossler. As we begin today, I want to share a couple of announcements for our church family. The first is, is that annual conference will be held mostly virtual this year on June 17th through 18th, and we are looking for a delegate who can participate online to represent our church charge. Also, uh, I am looking at changing our current phone tree prayer chain into a text chain so that everyone in the list would get a text with the details of the prayer request, and that would eliminate the need to call the next person. So if you're on that prayer chain right now and would, uh, if that would work for you, please let me know. Uh, or if you'd like to be added to that list, please let myself or Anita know and we will make those changes. During our time together, it is a joy to lift our hearts together to know that no matter where we are, that God is able to hear our prayers and that together our prayers make a difference. So today, I simply want to ask you to pray for both Tim, who is hospitalized at Buffalo General with COVID. Uh, he's only 30 and one of our local residents, as well as for Katie, uh, who also experienced COVID um, and had to deliver an emergency delivery on Easter Sunday of baby Paisley. Uh, so please continue to pray for both, uh, for both of those requests and to lift them up as often as you can. If you have any prayer requests or concerns and you would like me to pray with you, please feel free to reach out to give me a call, send me a text or a Facebook message, and I'll be glad to pray with you or to be able to share that with our church family if it's appropriate. Let's pray together. God of grace, we thank you for your love. We thank you that you are love, that all that you are is encompassed in love for us. Thank you that you loved us enough to send your son, Jesus. And thank you that you continue to love enough to be able to care for us, to give us new life, and to give us uh, the gifts that you give us each day. Uh, Lord, we just lift up our prayer requests today. We lift up our hearts to you, together praying for Tim, for Katie, for baby Paisley, and for the other things that are on our hearts, for the many who are sick, for those struggling with cancer treatments, for those who have lost their hope in this world, uh, for those that are struggling with violence and uh, for the mass shootings that have happened, for those who are grieving today. Lord, we grieve for the three million around the world who have been lost to COVID, for each family, for each child, for each parent that has been affected. Lord, we also lift up our daily needs to you and ask that you would continue to help provide for us. Lord, help us to be faithful in following after you, listening to your spirit, leading and guiding us, being obedient to the things that you show us this week to do. Lord, may we bring hope and love and peace and all that is good into this world. And may we set aside the pain and the suffering, the hurt that is caused by words and anger. And Lord, simply learn to be people who live in love in your ways. Lord God, we lift up our prayer requests today. We also uh, pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. 
Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. This is the reading of the gospel for today. For our Lenten season, we had looked at Jesus' last words on the cross. But now, as we're in the Easter season of the church calendar, we're taking some time to celebrate that Jesus' last words on the cross weren't his last words. There was more to come, because Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. Today's gospel is about two women who seek Jesus and find him in the seeking. There's Mary Magdalene, the woman that Jesus had healed of seven demons, and the other Mary, whom Matthew earlier identifies as Mary, the mother of James and Joseph. The two Marys head to the tomb early in the morning. They've come to look at the tomb. They've come earlier than anyone else. They've come probably before most people are even awake. They've left the safety of their homes while the disciples remain hidden. They've come confused, grieving, and anxious but they've made the effort to come. They might have come with an agenda to, uh, of accomplishing things, but Matthew simply says that they've come to look at the tomb. They've come to be where Jesus is. Now, even if Jesus has died, they've come to spend some time at his grave. The women are the ones who make the effort. The women are the ones to show their bravery, the women become because they are a vital part of Jesus' ministry and they were friends and followers of Jesus. They come seeking Jesus. In those early Sunday morning moments, nothing seemed more important to them than seeking Jesus. When the two women arrive at the tomb, they're a bit shocked because it doesn't look like they expected it to. I mean, they had been there just a few days before on Friday night when Jesus' body was laid in the tomb. They had been there when the stone was rolled over the entrance to the tomb. They were there when the guards were posted to protect the tomb. So when Sunday morning arrived, they expected all of those things. They probably expected a harsh word from the guards as they sat, out, sat to grieve outside the tomb. And Mary and Mary knew that they could never roll away the stone on their own. But they didn't expect an earthquake or dazzling angels or guards who fell over like dead men. Their expectations are shattered as an angel appears. That angel removes both the guards and the stone from their path. And the angel knows that the two Marys had come seeking Jesus. The angel says, I know you are looking for Jesus, but Jesus isn't here. He has risen just like he had said. The Marys came expecting Jesus in the tomb, but Jesus had repeatedly told his followers that he would die and rise again on the third day. So perhaps the women should have come expecting a risen Jesus. But the angel extends grace to the women. Come and see the place where he lay. Then the two women are given a task by the angel. They're to go tell the other disciples that Jesus has risen from the dead and will meet them in Galilee. Matthew writes, So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid and yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. I can imagine that these two women are feeling a whole lot of emotions all at once. But we're told to, afraid, yet filled with great joy. An angel had just given them a divine message. 
One that was a bit hard to believe, yet so exciting at the same time. I'm sure that the women had questions, well, like, will the guards stay there? Will they be followed? Or will the disciples believe them? Yet despite all of the questions and worries, they were filled with great joy because they wanted to share the good news. And so they obey the angel's message and hurry to tell the disciples that Jesus was no longer dead. I find it absolutely fascinating that Jesus interrupts their trip. That here these two women are obeying the angel's command. I mean, it's a divine command. And so you don't expect the divine to interrupt their own command. And you don't expect the divine to interrupt someone's obedience. But these women's obedience is interrupted by Jesus himself saying, Greetings. And the women immediately recognize Jesus and they fall at his feet, worshiping him. The risen Jesus shows up in their obedience to the task that they were given. Jesus' presence to the women confirms that everything that they had heard from the angel was true. Jesus really did rise from the dead. Here he is talking to them. What more proof could you have wanted? And he tells them not to be afraid. But I also think he might have been okay if the women were a little flabbergasted by everything that they were uh, experiencing at the moment. But he also sends them to finish the task. He sends them to tell the disciples that Jesus is risen. Jesus confirms that message and the women go. They tell the disciples all that's happened. So here they are, faithful, devoted women who want others to be able to seek Jesus too. As I was reading this scripture, I thought about the example that these women set. Mary and Mary are willing to be up early, to get to the tomb, to put themselves in a place that's near Jesus. Are we doing the same? Are we willing to do the work? Are we willing to sacrifice, to put in the time, to go despite any obstacles that might be in our way? Are we willing to seek Jesus? And when we do seek Jesus, I find that we often bring our own expectations of what we find when we go to seek him. We've heard Jesus preached and taught, and we have an idea of what Jesus might do or say. We've, we've probably put a picture in our minds of what Jesus is supposed to say and do. But here's the thing. Sometimes when we seek Jesus, we find a different kind of Jesus than we expected. Instead, we see Jesus in the poor, in the marginalized. We see Jesus in the work of justice and equality. We see Jesus in the temple flipping tables. The Jesus that we encounter doesn't always match the Jesus that we think we're sure we know. That when we seek Jesus, we need to be willing to discover the real Jesus, not just what we think he looks like. You see, the women expected to find Jesus in the tomb. And it was absolutely radical and unexpected to find Jesus who wasn't dead. It makes me ask myself, am I willing to find a Jesus who will shatter many of my own expectations and preconceived notions? Am I willing to search out the real Jesus? Because when I seek him, I will find him. But I'm not just going to find a cookie cutter Jesus. I'm going to find the real Jesus when I seek him. And I may just have to adjust that picture of Jesus in my head to match what we know about Jesus, the real Jesus, and the Jesus that we encounter. What Mary Magdalene and the other Mary probably learned most dramatically that day was that in seeking for Jesus and being obedient to what God wanted them to do, they found Jesus. Their trip to tell the disciples that Jesus had risen was interrupted by Jesus himself. That in their obedience to sharing the good news, Jesus stepped into their lives in a new way that changed them forever. And as Christians, we've been given the task of sharing the good news. And when we share the good news, we may just find ourselves finding Jesus along the way. And if we're not obeying, we might be missing out on those experiences of finding Jesus. 
as a pastor, I often think that I'm the one bringing Jesus to somebody else. And so when I get ready for what I'm going to do for the day, sometimes I pack my purse and my bag and I stuff Jesus in there right along with my keys and my wallet. Trying to be ready to face whatever it is I'm supposed to do that day, whether it's visiting at the hospital or preaching or praying with someone or simply listening to someone for a while. But what I've found most often is that I don't need to pull Jesus out because I encounter Jesus along the way. I see Jesus in the people that I'm with. I've felt the Spirit move long before I've prayed with someone. I've heard the good news shared from the midst of someone else's story. I've had God moments where the Spirit has moved long before I'm ready to pull Jesus out of my bag. Sometimes we simply need to start the journey, to start the journey of obedience. And when we do that, we meet Jesus along the way. That when we commit to being followers of Jesus, we can head out into our day both fearful and, greatly, and full of great joy because we just might meet Jesus along the way. We find out that we can encounter Jesus in the everyday and that he can challenge us about how we think he might look and show us and reveal himself to us in new and different ways that change who we are forever. But it starts with seeking. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. I pray that this week you go seeking out Jesus and that in that seeking you find him. Amen. Hear our benediction from Romans chapter 15, verses 5 and 6. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.